Um, I do think your envelope's probably really large. So you may need to reduce down. Um, that's what these guys are. This is your envelope size. That's how far off of the mesh and inside the mesh you're going. So outside and inside, it does, you know, if I have a cube, it goes inside and outside. I gave you guys, I'm pretty sure I gave you guys that demo. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm UVing, if I'm baking a cylinder like this, okay. Uh, if this is my cylinder, what's actually happening is I'm going to do a shift D and scale in and a shift D and scale out. Okay, so I'm going to make, I'm going to combine these two guys together, make a new Lambert and up the transparency on this guy so we get this demonstration down here. Okay, so this is my game mesh in there and this is my envelope. Okay, my envelope goes both inside the model and outside the model. So everything that's between these two cylinders is what bakes in. So your, your max rear distance is going inside, your max frontal distance is going outside. So if I have any holes that are going in, it'll capture that with the max rear. And if I have any details that are poking out, I'll capture that with the max frontal. Make sense, everybody? So your envelope is probably, your envelope's probably a little bit bigger because it's a higher number. Um, and you're capturing more details, which you may not want. You need these, your envelope has to be really nicely fine tuned so that you're capturing everything that's going out far enough, um, but you're not capturing stuff that you don't want to capture. Okay, so. Um, where was that image at? Let's see. So you, you're capturing your floating geometry, but you're also capturing some of this stuff, or maybe this wall is capturing this wall. Those tight little areas will capture themselves. So you might have a pretty big envelope. You need to make sure that you're sticking to at least 0 0.01 as a minimum for these things. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't go up to like 0.2. 0 0.02. Um, yeah, hold on, Keaton. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what I do, if I need a little extra umph with my bake, I go, I put a five in there at the end, and that's probably as far as I usually go, is something like that. It really, ultimately, it depends on how big your model is, too. So if I'm making something really small, but it's got a lot of details on it, I might need a bigger envelope because it feels because it thinks that that thing is something massive. So there are some scale differences there. This is generally what I would rather you stick to is something like that. But yeah, if you're if you're getting a lot of baking errors, that needs to get corrected, okay? Um, with the envelope size. Okay, I mean, so if, if you go if you go to, let's say for instance, you get rid of that one, that zero right there, right? Guess what you just did by doing that, okay? By default, this thing is set to 0 0.01, okay? So what that is, is that is, um, that is a 1% increase in volume there, okay? So if I do something, let me take this in here and let me see what we can do with scale. Let me freeze my transforms here. I'm gonna duplicate this guy up and I'm gonna put 1.01 up in here, okay? That's what my envelope just did. Um, and I can assign that, that other Lambert on here to show you. Okay, so that's what that did right there. That's my envelope. You see that that was the same number that we just did right there. I mean, if I, if I crank this guy up to point to 1.05, on all of these. Okay, that's how big my envelope is. 
And you know what? That that seems like a reasonable envelope size. Okay. Watch what happens when I do 1.2. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Even if I do 1.1 here. Let's do 1.1 and get rid of that zero. Still, am I really going to have details that are flying off that far from my mesh that needs to get baked in? Because this is going to capture a lot of crap. Okay. This is the demonstration that I'm giving to you guys right now for, for envelope size and why you need to fine tune these things 1.015. Is a reasonable size for you to keep things in okay and that's what but that's another reason why i say your floating geometry try to keep it nice and shallow so you don't have large envelope sizes now for sean here you know i'm still talking about sean uh that i that's what i'm talking about with this stuff here i haven't really covered your floating geometry yet and that's really a simple fix actually um with the ao happening there and I'll get to that. But does that make more sense to you guys with, with envelope? Um, that's what your envelope is doing, is if you just take your model and just scale it with that cylinder or as cube, whatever whatever kind of shape you want to think about. Um, it could be. And that's what I'm, you know, that's another reason why I'm saying, okay, well, if this is something massive, because that's what that's what this program is set to do, is it says, okay, well, this thing is probably really massive. If this, um, if this really was something smaller though, and I needed some bigger details in there, then there's there it kind of varies now. So this could be if this was a big pillar or like a big rocket ship or something, I would say, okay, well, I probably have little details in here that are kind of doing their little thing. So that's what this, that's what Substance Painter thinks this thing is. is this is like, this is a huge freaking rocket ship with little details on there. But let's say for instance, this is not a rocket ship. Let's say that this is a, Let's say that this is a fishing reel or something that's smaller that, that can, we can hold in our hands, but there are some bigger, there's some bigger details on that, that, that honestly, it's, it's the difference between what gets modeled and what gets baked on. Okay. So if I'm modeling a big rocket ship like this, there's probably going to be a lot of details modeled onto it because it's really big. So, you know, if I need. I'm going to let me freeze my transforms on this and I'm just going to isolate this guy, get rid of the grid for right now. Um, let's put some height divisions in there. And let me just, let me just extrude some faces in for you. Okay. Um, oh, soft select, get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Well, that's probably too far. Let's just do something like that. Okay. All right. So here's my demonstration here. Okay. Excuse me. So if this was, if this model here was a fishing reel, okay, would this stuff right here be baked on or would it be modeled in? Okay. That's the question I'm going to ask myself right now. Okay. I'm going to say, if this is something a little bit smaller, if this is a little hinge or something, we can bake this stuff in there. It doesn't really affect the silhouette that much. If, it, if all of it, all it's going to look like is like that big on the screen there. Let's just bake it in, right? Okay, so we can make that decision like that, all right? If this thing, if this was a large skyscraper building with windows that came along there and floor levels like that, would I model that in or would I would I bake it in? You would probably model it in. You need it to have a better silhouette because it's bigger on the screen. It demands more resolution and it needs a better silhouette. Okay. So that's the difference there with some of those things. So these larger models are going to expect you 
it's going to expect you to, if anything bakes on here, it's going to be nice and small. And it's going to expect you to have these things modeled on, and the envelope will reflect that. The envelope's going to look exactly like your model when you make it. It's actually going to be an inflation of the model. So, in all honesty here, this guy needs to go away. I'm going to duplicate this guy. Now I can't, I don't really have the the, uh, the ability to do numbers, like to inflate it to a certain number degree the way that I'm about to do it. Um, Cause I'm about to go into normals and do inflation on this guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna inflate it on the normals here. And this is what your envelope is doing by the way. So let me put that uh, transparent model there. So this is what your envelope is gonna look like for a model like this. If it, if it has to be modeled in there, that's what it's going to look like, okay? So this guy's modeled in. Where's my, oh, sorry, I forgot to take this guy back to object mode. Don't keep him in normals. All right, so this is what my skyscraper would look like here, is it would do something like that because it's actually modeled in there. Um... We just grab this guy for this example. This is what my fishing line is going to do, though. If my, my fishing reel is going to do something like this, though, because I don't I don't want that modeled into the game res, so my game res is going to look a lot like a cylinder. Um, now, for this tiny little object, I have some big details in here that might not fit in the envelope. It, you know, maybe if I if I extruded it to if I extruded it really far, you know, and my cylinder is, is back there on the base, it might not fit in the envelope. OK, so relative to the size there, it may be like, OK, well, it's not going to capture the high res details. It's going to crop it out. So I need to enlarge my envelope just a little bit bigger to capture that detail because the proportions of my model are not fitting into it. OK. It really is it, it really is relative to the size of the model, relative to the size of the scene. Even, you know, maybe if I'm if I'm using different units, if I'm using centimeters instead of meters, or or inches instead of meters, or whatever the heck I'm unit of measurement I'm using, that could completely throw things off here. Okay. I mean, the scale that we're exporting this thing at too. I mean, look at the grid size here. I think this guy is set up to meters right now. That's this thing's massive. So if I export this thing to Substance Painter, it might see it like that and say, oh, well, this is a massive thing. Let's only give it this envelope size, okay? So you have to be kind of weary of that a little bit. If the unit sizes are, are slightly different there. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of confusing. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around. If you start seeing things crop off, I mean, obviously your, your envelope needs to be a little bit bigger. Try to keep your stuff nice and minimized as much as you can for your floating geometry. Keep it nice and thin. Um, keep it nice and thin and shallow if you can so that you don't need a massive envelope. But if you see that your, your stuff's not baking in all the way, then make it larger. If you see that your stuff is too large and you're getting details from other areas, you may want to you may want to lower the envelope size on things. You may want you know you you may not want a massive envelope on these things. Okay, it it'll happen. It it takes a little bit of tweaking. You'll see the baking results. Again, if you watch my lecture video, I teach you guys that you shouldn't be baking at 4K to begin with. Like, start at a lower size, see where you're getting your baking errors from, and then, like, once you once you get, you're getting your better bakes out, then you start raising the, the, the resolution of everything, and start getting your longer bakes in there that look cleaner, okay? And, finally, I'm, com I'm coming around to this right now, to get rid of the AO shadow from your floating geometry, what you guys have to do is you have to actually click on ambient occlusion because it has its own little menu down here that you that is not on by default, okay? So you have to come down to the ambient occlusion menu here and set ignore backface to always. And what that's going to do is that's going to say that this these, these little flaps right here, it's going to say that's a backface, I'm going to ignore that. 
because it's not gonna it's does it doesn't need to bake on there all right i think most of the rest of your models are probably going to bake on there just fine but that ignore back face is going to get rid of those shadows around your floating geometry but it'll still bake this stuff okay that should clean up those bakes right there and get rid of that that, that halo around your model and that took a little bit of time. That's not, like I said, that's not in the 2.2 video or 2.1. So people may miss that. But I mean, I, I'm going to be critiquing you guys tomorrow and, and Wednesday. I'll be mentioning it again, just so you can go back and clean up your bakes. It doesn't take a long time at all. It's just a quick little and, and do the bakes again. And it should be fun. You won't have to make too many life adjustments or anything there. Okay.